All right, Ian Blackwood Talk Smack Podcast. <laughs> My guest today, Katie Clark. Hello. Katie, thanks for doing the show. Of course. So Katie is um, sort of an ex-band uh, management type turn personal assistant. That's right. Same thing. Babysitting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, okay, that's the thing about you. I always thought like you're you were just meant for that part of the job anyway. You were always so good at like... <laughs> like waking us up on time, being, you know, for if we had to do a video shoot, getting there on time. You were always, you were always kind of like. Time was important. <laughs> you were like the band's older sister, like yeah. looking after all, you know, so. Um, but okay, I wanted to kick things off. Um, I want to talk about a little uh, record label, <laughs> a little <laughs> tiny record label called Underground Operations. Oh, and I want to talk about past. yeah well <laughs> and let's talk about um, right before we get into underground operations growing up because um, I mean you're from the east side of uh, the GTA right yeah so um, you guys it's like the other 905 yeah because <laughs> you're the other 905 uh, see, I knew. <laughs> <laughs> from what I understood see, it was see? you guys from the other I 905 <laughs> I knew this was going to happen but what was it like growing up on that in, in the uh, I'm okay in your in your 905 <laughs> all right all right fair enough um well, like I grew up in Port, well, I went to high school in Port Perry. Okay. And so out there, I mean, I always heard a lot of, like there was this skater guy that wore a Maryland's Vitamin sweater all the time in high school. And I was like, what the hell is Maryland's Vitamins, right? And and we listened to like a lot of like Green Day or like things like that. But then I moved to Ajax and met Jesse Colburn, which is somebody you should definitely have on here. <laughs> yes, I'm, I've, Jesse, I'm going to be yeah. <laughs> emailing you. Um, and... He and Mark Spickluck, aka London, introduced me to like a whole world of bands and like a political movement at the same time. Yeah. And basically what was punk rock? And I, I was 17 at that time, so I wasn't, you know, the 13-year-old kid that was out, you know, screaming I'm an anarchist by any means. But uh, at 17, I, I definitely was exposed to a lot of things through them and uh, exposed to a lot of shows at the Dungeon in Oshawa. Oh my goodness, the Dungeon. And the, oh, yes. the ruckus that was caused there. Yeah. And there was a laser quest upstairs, I believe, for a long time. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah. It was either upstairs or just next door. Okay. My memory is a little foggy. Um, but... You know, it was it was always like it it was. There was the legend of like the other nine oh five and then there was this nine oh five and it I was always, all back I and knew, forth. I knew you guys <laughs> as the other nine oh five, but I'm sure that'll always be a battleground yeah. for them. But. So it was interesting and like, you know, the bands that were from that era and that area as well, like I mean, of course Claws and Monster and then you had the Protest the Heroes and you had, you know, Man with Target and all those bands that they kind of grew up in that area that everyone would play shows with and, and hang out and you were friends with and, and whatnot. And it was, it was pretty cool. And is that how Underground Operations was kind of born because of that sort of vibe? You guys kind of just turned it into, let's. I mean, I don't really know and... why Mark started UO. I think it was a lot to do just with an outlet for him to have something to put Closet Monster out on right. and, and help out his friends bands right? right so bombs over providence protest the hero were just mm. little shitheads at the time <laughs> um like oh man anyways um, <laughs> and uh hostage life and all those guys and then it became this collective that was really just okay well what are you good at what are you good at what are you good at and everyone helped out and did their thing and and i was going to school for fashion and uh i knew how to write a pl press release and the whole Label was going on tour and, and thus became my involvement in everything because somebody had to hold down the fort back at home. <laughs> I've never asked you that and I didn't know that. I was, I've never asked how sort of you started with the label. Oh, like I've well. never actually asked. So that's really cool. So you were going to school for fashion. Yeah, you were the for only business one who could, of fashion. Okay, but you were the only one who could write up like a nice looking... Well, I had met Jesse because um, a guy I went to high school with worked with Jesse at the local Ajax grocery store. Ah, okay. Oh. And uh, <laughs> so I met Jesse and Sincora. Jesse Stockton Michelle, so. and London yep. at the time and uh, they all lived at home with their parents and mm -hmm. I had my own apartment so oh. everyone hung out at Katie's place and okay, Katie's I had a deep deal. fryer and a big bag of potatoes that we would <laughs> cook french fries every night and um, and that's kind of where that all started okay. and then uh, I was into photography so I was doing a lot of band photos for Mark for um, Closet Monster because they were just starting to take off and the label was just starting so he needed press photos for everyone and I did all those and then they were doing this tour and he asked me to help with publicity and, and that's kind of 
where it all started. And then I guess it just grew from there, right? Obviously, yeah. Mark and I had a great friendship that started, and uh, and then um, it turned into us being working partners. And that was wasn't until like maybe a year after I started, and it was just going and hanging out shows and taking live photos. And this was all in film, right? Like this. And then I was right. going to the dark room, and I was developing them, and I was that kid, right? Back in the day, uh, yeah, kids. exactly. <laughs> then Photoshop came out, and I'm like, fuck that. <laughs> Am I allowed to swear? Yes, you are. Oh, of course. It's You'd swear like crazy. <laughs> Fucking shit. Oh, well, here we, we go. <laughs> shit, piss, fuck on. Anyway. So, okay. Um, how does, what was the interest for you, like the, the management side of you? How did that kind of kick in? And was that something that kind of just. Records weren't selling, so we needed to make money somehow. Awesome. I love the honesty. I nice. mean, that really was yeah. it. Like you get a statement from Universal and you're like, because UO was distributed by Universal. So mm-hmm. for records, you would get a statement every month that said, we paid this much to manufacture 5,000 records and you sold five. You still owe this much. And so it was a matter of how can we... Like, when UO was going on in the di- the, the boom of UO, I guess you could say, was kind of at the same time when CDs were starting to phase out and it was the time of Napster and right. and all... And um, Lime... What was that one called? Lime... LimeWire. LimeWire. I was like, Limestone? That's a street in the country where I live. <laughs> <laughs> no, LimeWire was, yeah. Well, LimeWire. Lime yeah. yeah, and then Lime it would wire, fuck yeah. up your whole computer because you'd get all these stupid viruses crazy and viruses. stuff just so you could download the new Killers record or whatever it was. Um, yeah, and then, uh, so we really had to figure out how to still make even the littlest bit of money so we could play the office rent. And okay. management kind of came into play. And you, yeah. I mean, you guys were, you were managing... I mean, you're managing some pretty hefty talent. Um, and even when it came down the to... The artist like, life? I know, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, well, stereos, like... Yeah. And then we can talk a little di- about Disband, too, because the, they're a band that successfully mm-hmm. uh, completed the show and then successfully released several platinum and gold-selling singles and did a successful... I still have the plaques on. Do you? Of course you do. <laughs> Um, but was that something that, um, management, was that something you, you knew like that, like that, um, avenue where, was that something like you kind of had a feel for and you, you wanted to do, or did you kind of feel I like mean, it, it turned into it or? We didn't really know what we were doing as much as we say we did. <laughs> right. I mean, we didn't. Right. And Who you were really just kind of <laughs> flying by the seat of your pants and you're just like, okay, what can we do next? What can we do next? And I think in a way, even as a record label, we were always managing the bands even though it wasn't formal right like right. when protest the hero were just you know shitty little kids puking on my floor because they had three shots of fireball it was it, we were still managing their career and you know and and even though it wasn't formal we were helping them find shows and helping them find a booking agent right. and we were much more than just like a record label right like it was yeah you guys were it always was way more and yeah. then it became like okay things are starting to get real and then we need contracts in place so you need to make it right. a little bit more formal and you start to see okay this is where when you put in work you actually see some sort of money from it right. where you spend all this time in a studio like mark producing bands and stuff and then like cd's come out and you're see nothing right, right? again because it was just such a pivotal point in the in the time it really was a wrench man like the lime wire the, the napster especially for people like yeah. yourself who are trying to run you know uh labels and trying to run uh programs that right. that are you know helping essentially like you know it, it all starts from the from the ground up but when there's like this massive hole and like huge I, sinkhole, I still, I, yeah, like, <laughs> like I, bridge burning. I between. still, yeah, I still have conversations with um, with people who don't quite understand uh, why music costs money or why movies cost cost money. And I'm in. I both, mean, I still don't understand. <laughs> I'm in both industries though, and I see, you know, I especially in film and stuff. You see the the, the gaffers, the dolly grips, mm. and the DOPs, and you see all these people. Everybody, there's everybody contributing to this thing, and then just somebody. Doesn't even want to pay seven or eight, nine, ten, twelve bucks. I mean, see for movie movies, tickets get, I can yeah. completely understand. Like there is no, there is the movie, the money that you make off the movie. Unless I mean, you're making a Toy Story or a Shrek where you have merchandising and all that shit. But yeah. like the new Rock movie does not have. You know, Re- is it Rebellion? I think is this new movie. Anyways, it doesn't have like Rebellion stuffed toys for kids to really <laughs> like and stuff, right? So if people don't buy tickets and they stream that movie, of course there's no payoff. Yeah. But with bands, it's like 
you put the music out there and then you sell the tickets for the show and you sell the t-shirt mm. and stuff. So there was other streams for us to capitalize yes. on. Um, in movies, yeah, like that's crazy. <laughs> but this, yeah, this whole, this whole um, I, I've heard someone say recently, microwave society of just fast, fast, everything's fast. Give me that, give me this, give me this. And I, you know, it is, a, I, I wish people would, consider and stop a little bit once in a while and say, oh, you know, yeah, I'll pay that buck for that song. And, you know, but I mean, right. people are... But now you have things like Spotify and Tidal. Which and I blah, actually blah, think... Blah, 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 yeah, blah. Like, I mean... <laughs> is it? I think Apple's dropping the purchase and downloading of music now and they're just doing their streaming service. Oh, it's I, starting to come into play because... Uh, yeah, that's interesting. I don't nobody know. Nobody really wants to necessarily own music anymore like i right. when i buy music it's because i'm buying a vinyl yeah otherwise i'm tangible, on spotify right? and yeah. i'm like you know here we go you've always been a tangible right as being an artist too you love i mean i i do it too i don't i'm kind of guilty of not purchasing like i'll purchase digitally but i haven't purchased physical in a long time but that's also because i've been in a medium working in a medium of music production right. where I'm i haven't purchased the- i hate music now <laughs> 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 i mean like legit like i do not like I call it like <laughs> like stripper music. Like I like like Cardi B and like shit like that now. Like it's so different. But otherwise I'm like, let's put on reinventing Axel Rose by against me. Oh, did you hear they came on a new record? I'm like, I don't care. I don't <laughs> like, you know, I like I like what I liked and yeah. I don't really like new music. And I don't I think that I think I'm just jaded. And, I know. You know hey, it's so. it happens. No, it totally happens. Anytime I listen to screaming music, I'm like, why are you whining? <laughs> <laughs> why are you whining? Why are you so upset? <laughs> uh, Disband. Okay, let's go back. Let's talk a little bit about Disband because I kind of remember a conversation we had. And I don't know if you remember this, but um, you talked to me. Uh, at the time, I was playing in a band called The Artist Life and we had signed with Underground Operations and then uh, Katie was managing us and running the label. It was all like a, a big, a big family. Yeah, a big incestuous house of, yeah, of street lies. team. Of, <laughs> no, <I mean. laughs> of, no, but um, I remember, I don't even remember this conversation, but I remember this conversation. And you actually said to me, where there's another season of a Dispan coming up and uh, they've asked me to be a judge. Do you remember? The- yeah, vaguely. <laughs> and you said, I mean, to, I do. You but said I- to me, um, and I'm not making this up, and I'm not trying to make myself sound like an angel, but you said, to, maybe not an angel, but you said to me, I remember this. they're asking f- me to be a judge, and I don't know if I want to do it. And I said, you have to do it. <laughs> you have to do it because it was. I didn't want to be a sellout. Like, really. Like, oh, I didn't. I'm not a yeah. sellout. It was more. No, like, I get it. I get it. I, I just it. didn't want to be a part of the machine that I hated so much. Like, you know what? I don't know. Like, <laughs> the machine that you're jaded about now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I like MTV now, Jersey Shore, Jersey on Thursday, you know, Teen Mom, let's go. But, but at the time, it was really cool because I remember we... Well, MTV, not much music, but anyways. Yeah. <laughs> we, um, we did have a moment and I was like, no, Katie, like as much as, you, as much as you're not sure about this, you need to do this. And I was like, you have to do it for us. <laughs> because I think did, that was, was my worry, though, is that there were so many things that... I did, because yeah. Stereos was from season one. So mm-hmm. that was before I was even involved in Disband. And the fact that I was like so on board with things like that, my means of justifying it was because it gave opportunities to you guys yeah. and to Hostage Life and, mm-hmm. you know, the things that really like truly meant something to me. Yes. So I was like, okay, well, it's like that Seth Rogen movie where he's like, oh, time to suck today's dick, if you know what I mean. <laughs> it was like, okay, I'll go beyond much music. Am I sucking the dick way? And then in return, I get to have the artist life on tour with stereos and being exposed to a whole new market. Which which was massive. We saw the numbers tour. come in. And f- you sell the EP and then you go on that tour and you're like, whoa. You, yeah. You, know, you want to talk was, numbers it was great. game. It, yeah. And how many fans you got out of that. And how many huge sp- like young girls that we and guys too yep. I mean but mostly girls mostly girls stereos, yeah. um, were exposed to something that they would have never ever saw so those, those are my reasons in justifying it I, just I mean that was you, fun as hell too but I sorry to, to cut, cut you off but I want you to understand that I saw the future <laughs> but it and mattered I, to me what you guys thought because it ultimately was for the artist's lives in my life, if that makes any sense. And we were very appreciative of it because yeah. it did, it did change things. Are we gonna hug now? <laughs> I know. We're gonna hug over the. Uh. <laughs> but, and I mean, you it changed things, but it didn't fucking make a difference. 
No, it does. I think every little bit does. No, it made a difference, sure, yeah. in like our lives and our experiences, but yeah. like artist life never became this. You're still in my heart. I know it's still. It's my in heart. your heart too. It's still my mom's wall. She has that. Uh, the campfire post. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> Up in the house still. I'm like, oh, let's take that down. Let's start a campfire. Yeah. <laughs> I listened to that record the other day. I so did I. That's funny. Um, but you had fun in Dispan. I mean, dude, every day it was like, "What do you want from Starbucks?" I'm like, "What's the most expensive <laughs> vegan thing I can nice. fucking buy?" And I want that. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> like, you know, give me three shots of espresso in it and soy whipped shit and that and the other thing. And yeah, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. And they did my makeup all the time, which was really cool. Hey, man. You know, it's like, hey, I, I, I've been an actor for 13 years and I was still, I was always doing acting in between the artist life stuff. And hey, sometimes a little bit of makeup, you know, sometimes you feel a little saucy. It's nice yeah. to feel a and little saucy. And they paid, they paid, which was good. And hey, we can talk about this being an independent artist and, you know, running a little label. It's nice to get a bit of money sometimes. I remember getting the artist life on Degrassi. I, I got oh, all yeah, of us yeah, roles yeah. on the Degrassi movie because, and we actually canceled tour, uh, one tour date for the tour we were doing. because In was like, order to. In order to do it. But I was like, guys, this makes way more sense. We have to do Yeah, this. I was like, I'm down but, for it. I get like 20%. Exactly. Or yeah. <laughs> Everyone gets a little money. Um, okay. The move, I want to talk the move then, uh, the move from music label management and into, I mean, nothing, it's not that much different personal assistant but i mean you're you're responsible for probably arguably the most like the biggest and most famous one of the most famous uh, digital <laughs> like dance music uh djs right like yeah i guess um <laughs> i mean yeah i mean he's definitely way up there that's for sure and we can say his name dead mouse we can say dead mouse <laughs> katie is yeah. dead mouse is i work as his personal assistant yeah. i always people are always like oh what's that like and Da, 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 da. And I said, you know, really, I, it's I don't work f for Dead Mouse. Really, I work for Joel Zimmerman. Right. I am his personal assistant, so mm -hmm. I handle his personal life. I don't travel with him. I did in the beginning for a very short period of time. It didn't make sense. He had a tour manager. He had a girlfriend, which is now his wife now, who's one of my best friends. Mm -hmm. She's, you know, we're great friends, and I'm so thankful that Kelly and Joel are married, and he married a great girl like her, and. Um, you know, but I deal with their personal lives. I don't really do much. It's because they're like, oh, you know, you must tour all the time or you do this and da 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 I'm like, no, I really don't do much as far as Dead Mouse is concerned. It is a lot to do with his personal life, taking care of the cats. I mean, the most important thing is getting him Tim Hortons every morning. Right. But then on top of that, it's it's the cats and it's the house and it's the property and making sure Kelly is good and making sure he's good and, he, you know, he's got cigarettes and all that stuff that keeps him as a person moving forward. Oh, that's and cool. And it's great. And they are great and they take such great care of Steve and I and, and their family. We spend Christmas Day together and eat Chinese food and it's fantastic. What's the, uh, okay, in, in like, um, you know, short bursts, like the comparison of like punk rock artist management versus like the the famous celebrity DJ artist management uh, assistant type what's like there's one of them and there was like four <laughs> plus of you <laughs> like i don't know it's much easier that way <laughs> lifestyle's got to be different though right oh well like, yeah i mean i don't have to worry about how to get money to get in the van to get to the next place with joel go. like you there know you i'm just worrying about getting the mclaren gassed up like very different <laughs> <laughs> mclaren is so cool um what was i remember you were you were uh We'll touch brief, briefly on uh, on the job interview because I remember it was pretty like <laughs> I think it was just it was after your uh, well after the disband days and then into um, the sort of removal of uh, yourself from underground up but um, I, I thought there was it was it was down to two people or something like that down to the job interview basically and <laughs> I left I parted ways with Mark and then I did a little project with Kreeft. Um, Adam Kreef, who yeah. was your booking agent? Who was our booking agent? Another good guy that maybe you should get in. Who is Adam with now? Uh, so people, we can tell the podcast. Oh, world. he because he uh, went to the agency was, group, right? And then he went with LTA. LTA is that what it's called? I, I have no know. idea. Sorry, Adam. That's okay. I, I mean, don't remember. We we shout out the name, but and then we tried, I think they closed, thing. and then right. something, and then yeah. he shuffled such around, as, and you know, such as the we way talk of those. every once in a while, but not here yeah. and there. We, he. 
But how did the job interview but any, for demos come to be? Right. So like I a, was working at a catering company for film and television. That's right. So I didn't want to have anything to do with music. Of I was course. jaded. And yeah. You went to the other, the other hard everyone. industry. Yeah. I did the same thing. <laughs> Just as hard. Um, <laughs> and I had a few job offers, but I didn't want to, like, I really didn't like my job all that much. Mm-hmm. Um, but I didn't want to switch to another job that I wasn't going to like very much. You know what I mean? So I was waiting for kind of like, what's the next step? And it'd be something that I was going to be doing for a long period of time. Um, and Sarah Scott, do you remember Sarah Scott? Of course. Absolutely. Yeah. From Universal. She was the lawyer at Universal. Um, a female that I worked really close with, which was, she was a mentor basically to me. And the amount of times I went and cried to her and be like, the boys are being mean. <laughs> and then we just do Jagger shots and everything was fine. Jagger <laughs> nice. um, cures all. But she had, she was friends with a uh, woman who owned an entertainment law company in California. Mm-hmm. And she had messaged me and said, Oh, um, I know somebody's looking for an assistant for one of their artists. If you're interested, like send your resume to here and blah, blah, blah. So then I sent the resume and, um, didn't really hear back for a little bit. And then she messaged me and said, Oh, do you want to meet up? And I said, yeah, sure. She's like, okay, I'm going to be in town. Let's have a meeting on, um, I think it was like the end of September, September 3rd. 30th or October 1st or something like mm-hmm. that. I said, okay. And then the next night before she messaged me and said, um, okay, so we're confirmed for tomorrow. Just to let you know, it'll be me and Joel. Joel is dead mouse. And at that, up until that point, I had no idea who the meeting was for. We had speculated, Steve and I a little bit, and I had looked up, um, who she represented, but she right. represents Britney Spears and Steven Tyler. Okay, so and like, it was, yeah, it was So I'm wide like, oh, open. it must yeah. be some like little, like when lights started up and with UO and I was helping out with publicity and I was just kind of like hanging out with Val a little bit and like whatever, I was like, oh, it's going to be like how Gion had Val and like kind of had her hang around with a few people that were knowledgeable in the industry and whatnot. So I was like, oh, it's going to be one of those things. And then when she said that, I was like, oh, and I'm like, <laughs> The only thing I know about Dead Mouse is that he got into a fight with Madonna about Molly. <laughs> That's oh. like literally the only thing I knew. <laughs> I had to ask Steve what EDM stood for because right. I had no idea. Electronic it's like, dance I don't, music. Yeah, yeah, I was like, what does EDM stand for? And then it's like, oh, EDM. I'm like, okay, makes sense. Um, and then I went and met and it was me and Dina waiting and Joel pulled up in his Ferrari and parked out front and he comes in all like, what's going on? Da, 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 da. And he's like, somebody was parked in a stupid VW bus in the front of the the hotel. And like, you know, the fucking loser dri- or hippie driving the VW bus, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, it wasn't me. Like, <laughs> you know, sort of thing. And then we sat and talked and, and then I left and I walked out of the room that we were in. And this other guy that I know was sitting there and I was like, what are you doing here? And he's like, well, I'm here for the interview. And I was like, <laughs> oh, and then I'm like, oh, you drive that v- VW bus, right? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, huh, have fun. And just like <laughs> kept walking. And then I called Steve and I was like, so it's basically between me and him. And if that's the case, then I definitely got the job. And within an hour later, Dina had messaged me and said, you know, do you, you want the job? And I was like, sure. When do I start? And she's like, tomorrow. I'm like, great. What do I do? And she's like, just go to his house. And I was like, oh. Okay. <laughs> she's like, what so do I do? It's a little. It's, and she's like, do you know what EDM means? You're like, I don't. And then that <laughs> no, was it. but I knew at that point. <laughs> yeah. By that point, I knew. I was, right. I was, I was, I was um, told what it meant. Yeah. And then the first day, I showed up at his house, and he lived in this condo, and it had one of those places where you have to like buzz to get in, and then go up to the floor, and then you see the the desk, and then they buzz you through the next door, and it was like. Call him like I don't know how to get in your house, and he's like, come upstairs, and I was like, I don't know how. <laughs> like it was really. Um, awkward at first, <laughs> and then um, I guess as it would be, right? Yeah, and then it was fine. It was great. And now and, here you are and now. And it's great, and we live next door. And like I said, they're family, and it's fantastic. And speaking of living next door, you you're a vegan, yeah, and you run a farm, yeah, a small farm, very small. Yeah, but what's <laughs> it like being a vegan farmer? It's great. Yeah, yeah. Nice. I mean, we don't eat any of our animals, obviously, but um, we have three chickens and two ducks. I'll eat them for you. No. <laughs> we have a very old horse named Joe, and he's 34 years old. Oh, I see Joe on Instagram all the time. Yeah, he's my senior boy. And That's then awesome. we have two little shithead goats named Goats and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> nice, Katie. Well, hey, I'm going to wrap up the episode quick here. I do this little segment. It's called The Shit I'm Into. Oh, dear. Very, very quick. Um, lately, I've been into... Um, 
eating ketogenic. And when you eat ketogenic, you have to replace certain fats in your body. And it's nice to have some MCT oil. And I've been having this uh, Nativa MCT oil. It's uh, medium chain triglycerides, I think it is. Um, but anyway, uh, you just put a little bit on like your salad or on your uh, whatever you're eating in the morning. MCT. And MCT. What? what does that stand for? Medium chain triglycerides, I believe. Which is what? Uh, it's, Why do you take this? <laughs> it's, 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 it's a fat. It's like a fat oh, okay. yeah, for your brain. Got you. Yeah. Keeps your brain on point, um, and for other things, but yeah. So what that's, other things uh, make it sound like it's secretive? Like is it no, I like mean for your body, the working of everything weighs <laughs> down or something. <laughs> like I don't know. <laughs> Mostly for your brain. Okay, I gotcha. But um, yeah, and your other it, brain. It, it's a nice little yeah, your, yeah, your brain and your other brain. But that's just the shit I'm into uh, right now, among other things. But Katie, what's the shit you're into? Farming, I guess. Nice. Like I mean, every day is just so like new and chaotic and like this thing, that thing, and whatever. That I, I mean. I work out a lot, and that's my point in my day, that one hour that I take for myself. And during that hour, it's like I go to the gym and I do my thing for an hour, and that's my time. And that's what I solely do for me. But everything else, it's like for everyone else. Who have thought? It's always been. I thought she'd wake up one day from being a punk rock princess to a vegan farmer. <sighs> Personal assistant. <laughs> well, Katie, thanks so much for doing the show. Uh, any uh, Instagram plug or anything you want to plug for yourself? Oh, we or? have an Instagram for the farm. It's Perfect. Plug it. Epic Fail Farm. Amazing. E P I C F A I L Farm. Well, Katie Clark, thanks so much for doing the podcast. I really thanks, appreciate man. it. I love you. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs>